My name is Brandon Heller, and I'm the CTO and co-founder of Forward Networks, and I'm very happy to be here today at NFT 27 to talk about why all teams need network data. All right, so if you don't know what we do, you're going to know within a few minutes, but I'm going to start things off with a story. All right, so let's say I want my team to go to, to exercise more. I can tell them, hey, you should go running. There's a path right over there. It'll be nice. And then I hear crickets, right? The other option is, hey, would you like to join this, uh, this 5K? It's next week, it's exactly at this time, and it's free. Which one do you think is likely to generate more interest and, and get the result, get the feet on, you know, the boots on the, or get, you know, feet moving? It's probably the 5K, right? It's the same three miles, but it's a very different experience. And for me, a, a 5K is a lot like a hackathon, right? There's water and food along the way. There's a well-defined finish line. It's on your calendar. People are motivated. People are cheering for you at the end. And, you know, I actually got asked to, to do a hackathon or to join a hackathon as, as a judge recently. And this was not a usual hackathon. And, you know, the, the hackathons I've been to are kind of like 5Ks. You're just impressed at how much people push themselves to get to that goal and how good they feel after. But this was not the kind of hackathon that has insert your traditional, you know, typical developer stereotype here, people in hoodies or coding furiously late into the night. This was fairly different. This was a networking team that wanted to do a hackathon. And the reason was this. So one of our customers just stuck their neck out for us. They believed in the power of data so much that they invest in the product. And for them, shelfware is, is the ultimate issue. Like they don't want shelfware. They want to avoid shelfware syndrome. And how do you avoid that? You get a lot of people in one place, you give them the 5K experience, you guide them, and, and you get them to be comfortable with hands on the keyboard in front of that platform. So that's what they did. And our customer success architects were partnered with a bunch of teams. In fact, let me show you the prompt for that hackathon. I thought it was pretty interesting. It's very simple. You have one day to solve your own or your team's most pressing challenges using data and insights from the forward platform. And here are the judging criteria. There's business value, user friendliness, technical difficulty, innovation, creativity, each has a different score. And the top five presentations will be presented to the head of networking, the head of IT, the head of security, and, and me. And so, you know, I didn't see, uh, but the question most people had, you know, was, well, what's, What's forward networks first? So let me let me jump in uh, and, and give a quick one minute explanation there. What is it that we do? We provide network intelligence. Why do we do it? Well, that's the key to enabling true re reliability, agility, and security, both of the network as well as broader digital infrastructure that depends on networking. And the way we do it is to collect, organize, and make network data useful and then actionable. And so Tom mentioned NFT, and it was back in 2016. Don't even remember the number at this point. We came out of stealth. We showed what the product could do to collect data and make it accessible. And since then, we've been on a journey to get it adopted at scale pretty much everywhere. So today, our largest deployments, single instance, multiple nodes, beyond 50,000 network nodes uh, of coverage. So let me dive into that one just a little bit more, explain exactly what we do, a little more precision here. So we go out to switches, routers, firewalls, load balancers, proxies, SDN controllers, SD-WAN controllers, wireless controllers, virtual versions of all of the above, everything you've got in the cloud, AWS, uh, GCP, and Azure, basically everything that touches a packet, we go out to. And we understand its configuration and its state through whatever protocol is available, right? Some of the cloud stuff, it's going to be an API, but more traditional network devices expose that information via CLI. So we get it all, we put it all in one place. Uh, we don't just kind of scratch the surface and get the basic, S, you know, basic CLI or SNMP data the stuff that you would know, we actually have to go extremely deep. We have to go so deep so that we can understand everything that device is thinking in that moment so that we can even predict what any packet would do if it arrived at that device. And so we can zoom out and predict what that entire network is going to do for any packet. So there's a lot of data that we have to collect and there's nothing else that really goes this deep or has this ability to collect all that that quickly. So then how do we make it accessible, right? That's the second half here, two things. First is a system called Network Query Engine. You're gonna hear more about that later for sure. And that enables queries on config and state individually or together. You can mix and match the two. 
And the beautiful thing about NQE is that it has this vendor neutral abstraction. So for a lot of questions on data where you would have to do a lot of the work to normalize the data, we've gone ahead and done that for you. And so you can access that through UI queries, through the API or through scripts that are written in the app. All right, the second method going beyond the config and the state is comprehensive path analysis. So this is not one or two paths. This is every possible path through the network. This is a, a database of all network behavior is one way to think about it. In fact, you know, I like analogies. I already gave you one. I'm going to give you another here. So we use digital twins all the time and we don't think twice. And I think this is maybe the easiest way to think about what we do at Forward. So whenever I get in my car and I want to go somewhere, GPS navigation takes me there, right? I type, I say, I don't even have to type it. I just can click the button on the steering wheel and say, take me here. And then a digital twin of the world's roads takes me there, guides me, gives me all the context I need to get to that destination, has up-to-date traffic info. It's great. Same thing with web search, right? Now we type in our queries and we get either the answer immediately or we get all the context we need to solve that, either to go to the next source or the information that then we, we look through and, and find the next step on. That's a digital twin of the internet's web pages. Forward is like a digital twin of your network, right? If you wanna navigate anywhere on that network, you go to Forward. And I say that as an actual user of the product, a dog fooder, right? Anytime I wanna go to my, not as big as your networks, but anytime I go to my small network, and I want to understand how we're going to the cloud and back. Anytime I want to understand how we're going between our data centers, we have two. One hosts one of the backup servers, for example. I go to forward and it shows me where hosts are and where traffic goes. This is a digital twin of your entire network. All right, so back to the hackathon, back to our story. So I basically show up, right? I don't know what to expect. I don't know how many people are going to be there. I did nothing to help these teams. I just get to see the results. I'm so happy. This is great. No work for me. I get all the benefits. And I am blown away because it's 54 people that have signed up and way more than that on the Zoom call. It's across 13 teams, they have 14 unique use cases, and it's not just the networking team, it's a whole bunch of others as well. And I was really impressed. In fact, for that two hours, it was problem, solution, business value of that solution. Even in some cases, they had roadmaps for their one day projects of all these things they wanted to do on top. I was impressed so much I couldn't keep up that I had to go back, rewatch the Zoom recording so I could produce scores that I would trust, that I'd be comfortable with. And I wanna share just the five top projects really quickly and then we'll zoom out. All right, so the first project, I love this name, Guardians of the Gateway. The Guardians of the Gateway uh, had two challenges. One is every time they would have any call about a wireless AP, they need to figure out which switch it's connected to. Really straightforward use case there. Second one is they were in the middle of a large scale migration of all their, their APs. So they just need the info in one place, right? They just need it relatively straightforward instead of getting it from a CLI or writing a script for that. They used NQE and they turned it into reports and the reports have just what they need, always up to date, save them time and troubleshooting, save them a lot of time really. All right, second team was more application oriented, more cloud application in fact. And the goal of their project was to see what they could do, to see what kinds of paths they could trace if they could get visualization that would help them do their job. And they wanted this to reduce troubleshooting time anytime there's a call, but also they wanna know that every time they deploy, it's, it's actually correct. They want kind of that evidence and that understanding that only comes when you can visualize everything in one place. So there are three cases and they were able to test them all out. This is of course not their data, this is sample data. Uh, all they had to do was add their AWS instance and then their, their uh, GCP instance and they could and Azure and then they could see these, these connections. So one was on-prem to cloud, Increasingly, as their apps move to the cloud, they want to understand the dependencies that still live on their premises. Second was region to region. What's the connectivity like? Third is Azure to AWS. That's an example of multi-cloud connectivity. Okay, third, network engineering, net uplink resiliency testing. And here the goal was to validate the presence of redundant uplinks because like many, you don't get it right every time or it can kind of drift out of that compliance and you'd much rather find these issues in advance rather than see the SLA violation. So they wrote an NQE script and they did three checks. One check was highlighting any violations. The other two were more kind of like generating reports, producing the evidence they'd need that yes, in fact, uh, they've got redund redundant uplinks and everything has the right matching VLANs, for example. All right, fourth was yet another completely different team, completely different use case. SSL certificates on F5 load balancers. And their goal was put it all in one place because if you've ever had a certificate expire, someone will call you very quickly because the app is broken. 
ask me how I know. And they wanted to include some location date filters so they could get ahead of these things. Another fairly straightforward use case, but something they didn't have an ability to automate before. So they wrote some code, they grabbed the data, uh, they were able to, to see it. And, and I want to point something out that's very hard to see at this resolution on a 4K screen, it's a little easier. There's a little bit of highlighted stuff in red. It shows three days for two particular certs. And at the bottom left, it says, file certificates.csv has been saved. Thank you, live long and prosper. <laughs> There's a little bit of personality in a lot of these projects I really enjoyed. All right, and then the last project, a server team helped out the networking team. And they did something they're pretty used to doing from an automation perspective. They glued different services together where those services have APIs. And the goal of this project was to demonstrate how you could do change check-in and check-out where service now tickets say, we're gonna make a change at this time and here's what we're gonna change. And they wanted the ability and they actually implemented this, a workflow where they would collect from the network before the change, wait until the change was done, collect from the network after, and then automatically using forward, send the diff of everything that had changed. And then you get more eyes on the same problem so you can identify silent issues that in the past kind of had gone unnoticed. And what I really liked is that this is a kind of natural experiment, right? I don't define the value of my product as a vendor. The users do. The users define the value of the product with their usage in their specific environment. We kind of got to see it here. So what are my takeaways? Well, by the way, yeah, they, they got first place. I think deservedly, they pulled the most stuff together. They really showed, okay, I mean, if everything is, a, is an API call away, then you can do a lot of useful integrations very quickly, right? You can kind of change the way people work to catch those things that would otherwise be uncaught. All right, so taking it away, number one for me is just trust your people, right? They can solve their own challenges when the data is there and it's in a usable form. And the more you can do to remove friction from that, the easier it's gonna be. All right, takeaway number two, this isn't just about the network team. These network insights benefit more than just networking people, right? All of that core network infrastructure on the left, plus cloud, plus external data sources, all that stuff we can pull together into one place benefits an awful lot of people. CIO wants to know how is the network trending, getting better or worse, where is it? NetOps wants info to get changes done. SecOps wants to complete their investigation, needs network information frequently to understand, well, what was connected then? Where can this traffic go? Finishing the investigation. Application teams need to know if it's the network. Compliance and audit need to generate reports for consistency. Cloud teams need to understand what's going on. And we even had a printer team wanted to know where the printers were, which was the least expected team participating in a hackathon that I, I could think of, or the wireless networking team wanting to know where their wireless IPs were. So third takeaway, the teams really believed in the outcome. Uh, because they have the data and they have the insights on top of the data, right? Data is not enough, you gotta have the insights too. They could see how projects or changes would be completed on time. They could see how downtime would either be reduced or potentially completely avoided. Um, and they could see how breaches could either be informed or potentially avoided as well. And Eric will be talking about one of those. So just summarize it as speed, context, certainty. These things really matter. And here's a slide that shows the relative efficiency gain where the numbers get really big. And the numbers are meaningless at that point. If it's a 5,000 X efficiency gain, there's a task on the left that that customer, in this case, this is actual numbers from a roughly 50,000 node deployment, their task people would never do if they take at least a day to do them, right? There's always something else you can do that's more pressing, something that's breaking right now. So route map validation across 500 routers on the top or route table consistency across 2000 devices. These are things that people just can't do without help. And if you eliminate that friction to where they can get these insights, then now you're ahead of those problems. You kind of shifted from just reacting to you're starting to get ahead of some of the bigger challenges. So whatever speed analogy you want, it's a, it's a big meaningful difference because it's not just about speed, it's about what insights you actually get.